A viewer has asked me to show installation process of the common desktop environment or CD on OpenBSD. These are the some of the CD screenshots. As you can see, it's a very old school desktop environment. In case you don't know what is CD, it is a desktop environment developed for Unix and OpenVMS based on the Motif widget toolkit and basically it was part uh, it was shipped as a part of the unix 98 it was a proprietary uh, desktop environment until 2012 afterwards uh, the code base has been released uh, actually under the lgpl and many people and enthusiasts have uh, actually successfully used it on linux and bsd this cd uh, was a collaboration is a product as a collaboration of between HP, IBM, Sun Microsystem and USL. So there is a guideline on installing it on OpenBSD, but uh, some people have mentioned that it's not really working on the latest version of OpenBSD 7.1. However, I managed to uh, compile it successfully. It took a while, but it worked at the end. So we are going to follow the same guideline and show you actually how to do it. So it, it requires a bit of tweak in some steps, but generally speaking, it's kind of work. So this is the uh, first installation on OpenBSD. Even it doesn't have a browser. That's why I have to use actually the browser on my host machine. So. I'm running the OpenBSD 7.1 in the virtual uh, box and uh, it has nothing, it's a, a stock version. The only thing that I installed was basically the uh, curl because I wanted to get this uh, screen resolution fixed. But other than that, there is nothing actually installed. Even I, I don't have the duas configure here. So I switch to the root user and then we start with installing a bunch of the dependencies it is a pity that I cannot actually go full screen here because I need to read the instruction I don't remember each and every step so please uh, bear with me so for the TCL as far as I know there are two versions so I just type TCL and then select the version so we are going with the 8.68 and lastly let's install gmaker stuff so when it asks for the autoconf uh, select the latest version same as automake and now we have to actually clone the repository mind you that i'm still actually under the root user so i'm doing everything under the root user okay now let's go to the where the source code of the cd cd here okay and let's read the rest of the instruction so we have to actually use autoconf instead of the imake I believe so let's use the autoconf first uh, we need to export some environment variable so pkg info automake get the version of automake export automake version 16 we don't need to specify the minor version mind you and for the auto conf we install 2.71 and export the library path and run the autogen okay now we have to actually run the configuration script with bunch of flags and stuff all 
Alright, the next step is to run GMake, but before that, I highly recommend to enable hyperthreading so you will have a faster compilation time. On virtual machine, it took around 45 minutes, if I'm not mistaken, this time I time it, but it took some time to actually do the compilation. So it's good to enable hyperthreading. So for that one, do cctl hwsmt equals to one and it, that enables the hyperthreading so now let me run the gmake with the flag j2 because i gave just like two cores here and single threaded so i pass j2 if you have more threads you can for example if you are having four threads you can just do j4 it's up to you so gmake j2 and this process is going to take some time, so I'm going to pause the video to speed things up. And once it's done, I'll continue. All right, the make a step has finished after 15 minutes. God help me if I want to compile Gen 2 on this machine. But nonetheless, on your computer should be faster, I'm assuming, because this is a 7-8 years old laptop that I'm running OpenBSC inside of the virtual box. So it's... It's kind of normal to take that much of time to compile anything. So the last step is to run gmake install. This is supposed to be shorter, but nonetheless, I think it's going to take a couple of minutes. The installation process is done. Let's move to the configuration part. So we have to modify rcconf local. So we and i'm going to add this one at the first line essentially there's save it and now we have to modify the etc hosts okay so first is the local host ip address and then tab i have to pass the username so this is my username then again tab i need to pass the domain name so this domain name is what you in when at the time of installation you specify i have a specified actually i have to actually put the my name that domain name so and then the domain is vm and I have to repeat the same process the next line save it so this is the domain name as you can see is VM and now I have to create a file under etcrc so let's go to there rcd so this is a daemon file and the name is cmst okay i don't have vim so let's put this stuff there okay so let's save the file and the step afterward is to enable a bunch of demons so First, we have to enable the daemon that we have created, cmsd. Now it is no do as actually here. Okay, so now it is telling us that the daemon doesn't exist, but the daemon exists. I'm assuming this has to do with the permission. As you can see, it doesn't have the executable permission so we have to do sysmod a plus x and then pass this script if we try to enable this again it should work okay rcctl enable infd port map okay and before rebooting, uh, let's do the rest of the configuration. So, 
basically to test it there are multiple ways actually to load it this one is about testing we, we are going to skip it for now so to load it there are multiple approaches one is to actually do it at the boot time so it says it's not recommended so we are going to use the Zeno DM and that would be the simplest approach so we need to leave the root user go back to our own user so if I do who am I you see this is a, this is not a root user and I'm going to simlink this one to the X session so now I should have X session file as you can see there is X session file and if I do a reboot I should afterwards see the CDE loading so let's wait for it all right this is the first boot after the installation process now if I log in I should see CDM and as you can see CDM is loading okay that is great the resolution is a bit messed up for now but it's fine I mean somewhat the configuration I applied didn't pick up but that's just in the VM the last step is to fix this DT profile and what we have to do we have to uncomment this line and then we should be good to go all right so i managed to also fix the resolution somewhat so now this is the cd environment as you can see and it's pretty interesting and most of the stuff i i checked is sort of working so we have graphics things like that and this supposed to launch a bunch of applications which they don't exist obviously so once you install those it will work otherwise it won't that's all about this video as always don't forget to press like button and subscribe to the channel have a great time cheers